Hello all, good evening. It's, uh, it's another quiet Saturday afternoon in Bangalore where I live and uh, I have been trying to get some labs done but uh, the IPX server was down today I guess and I, I think I received an email from Andrew from IPX or Proctor Labs to be precise saying that the IPX labs are down uh, so I could not do the IPS volume 1 labs that I wanted to do today. But never mind, I spent some good quality time today uh, figuring out and reading up on FTP inspection on the ASA. I know, that seems like a pretty mundane thing to do, right? I mean, FTP inspection is already proven and uh, we have used it in a lot of Volume 1 and Volume 2 labs before. But until today, <laughs> I'm not ashamed to admit it, I actually didn't know how exactly it works. But today, I, I think I know, um, a pr I have a pretty good idea about how it works and I spent quite some time debugging it, actually to be precise, I spent about two hours uh, debugging it. So um, I was really excited by what I found and I thought it would be great if I could share it with you. So let's get started. In this video, I'm going to be uh, doing two things. First, I'm going to be explaining, giving you some background on the two modes of FTP uh, file transfer that is the active mode and the passive mode. After the theory is done, which is hopefully going to be small, we're then going to be getting into the ASA configuration and seeing how FTP inspection helps certain modes to work. Is that clear? Great, let's get started. First, I'm going to give you a small briefing on the different modes of FTP inspection. All right. Uh, in front of me, you can see that I've configured a small topology on GNS3. This topology has uh, very little elements. It's got the FTP client here, which I'm going to be running the FileZilla client. If you guys haven't tested this out, it's a great tool. FileZilla is one of the, I think it's freeware, and um, it's pretty good. You can it's, it's you can select active mode, you can select passive mode, there are a lot of different options. I think you can even do SFTP. So um, I would really recommend downloading the FileZilla FTP client. And for the FTP server, I'm again using the FileZilla FTP server running on my um, Windows 2003 server. This is going to be the PC where I'm recording. This is the Windows XP, no sorry, Windows 7. And this is going to be the Windows 2003 server which I usually use as the ACS server. So as you can see, I have the uh, client and server installed and I'm going to try to connect to the server from the client through the ASA or in this case, it's the PIX. PIX or ASA, it actually doesn't matter to you. Um, and I'm going to try and establish FTP sessions and I'm going to be trying out different modes and different placements of the server and client and seeing how they all affect each other and seeing how they all work. Now, um, I now since that little introduction is over, let's actually get into the theory. All right, I've erased the screen. Now, um, let's keep the topology as it is. Uh, this side, I'm going to be representing the server and this side, whatever I draw, is the client side. So server and client. So first mode, in FTP, we have two modes. You might already know this uh, if, you've, if you're studying for the CCI security or even otherwise. Uh, the first mode is called passive mode. And the second mode is called active mode. Now, th these two are different in their modes of operation. Now let's get into the first mode, that is passive mode. Here, as uh, you can see that I have my FTP client on the inside interface and the FTP server on the outside. So first, I'm going to be representing all the port connections on the client on this side and the server connections on this side. So first, what the client is going to do is it's going to pick a random port in, which is greater than 1023, and it's going to send it's going to send a command or a message to the FTP server's data port or to the FTP server's control port. The FTP server is always listening on TCP port 21 for any incoming FTP control sessions. So first, the client sends over a message uh, to the FTP server control port, which has the message of PASV in it. Now, 
when the server sees this message, it's going to know that, hey, I'm a client and I'm trying to transfer and I'm trying to connect to you through passive mode. Great. Now the server knows that in passive mode, the client is going to be setting, it's going to be um, initiating both the connections. It's going to be initiating both the data, both the control connection and the data connection. So for the, con for the client to initiate the co data connection, the client needs to know to which data port to connect on on the FTP server. So the FTP server, what it's going to do is it's going to open a random port X which is again greater than 1023 and it's going to tell the uh, FTP client hey I've, op I've opened a port X for you you can use that port for transferring data so after the client after the server sees the passive command come in it sends back a port command to the uh, FTP client saying hey I've opened a port X for you now the client knows that port X has to be used for data transfer so the client now opens up port M plus 1 and it sends over a data message to the uh, server to port X. So now the server is expecting the data connection to come in on port X and when it comes in it sends back the data and the acknowledgement. So let's have a quick recap of how this works. First the FTP client initiates a passive mode connection to the FTP server on its FTP control port of TCP21. It sends the PASV command. Now, when the server sees the PASV command, it knows that the client is trying to connect to it through passive mode, and now it opens up a random port X and sends the value of that port back to the client through the port command. Now, the client uh, opens up another port and s knows that if it wants to connect to the server, it has to now connect to port X. So it initiates a data connection to port X, and now when the uh, port X uh, sends back traffic, um, it, it, it sends back from the port X to port N plus 1. Great. Now you know how FTP passive mode works. But for now you can uh, think about how the ASA sitting in between will work. All the ASA needs to do is have a look at the ports in order to open random dynamic channels. But you know what? Let's reserve that for a future section and let's go ahead with active mode. All right, we're, uh, we had a look at a passive mode. Now let's have a look at active mode. In active mode, the slight difference between a passive mode where both the connections were initiated by the clients, but in active mode, the, the control session, the control connection is initiated by the client, but the data session or the data connection is initiated by the server. That's the difference here. So you have got to keep that in mind when you're configuring your intermediate devices like your routers or firewalls if they're in between them. So you have to permit some ports. But before that, let's have a look, a detailed look at how active FTP works. Again, I'm going to be representing the client side on this side and I'm going to be representing the server on this side. So first, the same thing happens. The client picks a random port in, just like in, act just like in passive, and it's going to connect to the TCP port 21 that is the server's FTP control port. Uh, this might look the same but here's the difference. In active mode when the client connects to the server it instead of sending a PASV command as you see in the passive mode it's gonna send you a, a command which says port and it's gonna pass a value of port n plus one. What this says what, the, uh, what this tells the FTP server is hey, I'm a client and I'm connecting to you through port N, but I'm also opening another port which is of the value N plus 1, which you can connect to if you want to transfer any data. Remember, in active mode, this after establishing the control session, which is client initiated, for the data session, the server initiates, initiates the data connection. So the server must know to which port on the client machine to connect to. So what this uh, FTP client does is it opens port N, it also opens port N plus 1, and it sends the value of port N plus 1 in the port command to the server. Great. Now the server is also running, is running, this is the FTP control port. Now the server is also running FTP data port. It's, it's also open. This is CCP port 20. Now the server uses this